welcome to our presentation on collaborating with academic support units. My name is Kelsey Johansson, and I will be co-delivering this presentation with Natalie Chow. The recent transition to remote and online learning necessitated by the COVID-19 pandemic, students have been experiencing considerably higher than normal levels of burnout, Zoom fatigue, and stress, which have had negative impacts on students' academic performance and mental health. For the past two years, I have taught outdoor recreation, tourism, and the natural environment here at the University of Waterloo. This course is open to students from across degree programs and academic backgrounds. The course examines human nature relationships in leisure and tourism contexts and integrates experiential learning with theoretical and critical inquiry to understand and analyze values, attitudes, cultures, programming, impacts, management, and contemporary issues and trends related to outdoor recreation, tourism, and the natural environment. Historically, this has been accomplished through weekly in-person lectures and outdoor seminars. Outdoor, experiential, and place-based learning enables meaningful, personalized, and culturally relevant learning by giving students voice and choice in determining what, how, when, and where they learn, tailoring learning to each student's strengths, needs, and interests, ensuring mastery of academic skills, and promoting student agency. It has numerous additional benefits, including ensuring that students' experiences are grounded in local communities and contexts, that they gain a better appreciation and understanding of the world around them, including ecosystem processes, and meeting deeper learning outcomes while being challenged to see the coursework and materials through ecological, economic, and sociocultural lenses, and participating in relevant and engaging inquiry-based learning activities that produce long-term pro-environmental values changes, foster environmental concern, and cultivate ecological and environmental literacy. The structure of this course therefore provides an opportunity to combat the challenges associated with remote and online learning, while also fostering the development of environmental values, pro-environmental attitudes, and environmental concern, as well as place attachment and environmental literacy. But how do we achieve this in an online and remote instructional environment? To address the need to pivot to a remote learning environment, I partnered with Natalie Chow, a Center for the Teaching Excellence Faculty Liaison, and Catherine Lithgow, a senior educational developer who specializes in integrative and experiential learning to redesign the way that Rec 230 was delivered. We also hired two student online learning assistants or OLAs to help with the redesign and to provide meaningful student perspectives on the modifications. Teaching assistants supported course delivery throughout the term. Additions to the course included integration of a new intended learning outcome focused on engagement in self-directed, asynchronous, active, and collaborative learning experiences through weekly seminars and the provision of peer-reviewed feedback on reflective portfolio entries. Additionally, the Experiential Creative and Reflective, or ECR, assignment was modified. Weekly TA-led outdoor seminars were replaced with 11 weekly self-guided nature journaling activities, each lasting 45 minutes. The objective of these self-guided seminars was to establish a basis of outdoor experiential activity through their weekly nature journaling activities that would serve as the assignment's experiential component and to cultivate a sense of belonging in and attachment to the place they visited to complete the activities. Each student completed all seminar activities in the same place and was provided with instructions on choosing an appropriate location in week one of the course. Weekly activities were documented and reflected on in purpose-built PebblePad portfolio peer review. Feedback also provided through PebblePad replaced an end of seminar in-person reflective sharing circle. The creative component enabled students to document and reflect on their experience in a creative and expressive way through individually crafted or performed submissions, representing their experiential seminars through paintings, drawings, songs, carvings, and stories. The third component is a paper in which students draw on the experiential and creative components of the assignment, as well as other life experiences and interests to reflect on the meaning and significance of their outdoor nature journaling activities as a form of outdoor recreation and as outdoor place-based experiences. So what is PebblePad and why use it? In a nutshell, PebblePad is an e-portfolio tool and personal learning journey platform that is centrally supported at Waterloo. Combined with good design, PebblePad can effectively help students reflect on and integrate their learning. This integration of learning can happen across courses within a program and between campus and community life, encouraging students to connect their classroom learning to other experiences such as extracurricular activities, co-op placements, or other work. Instructors can use PebblePad to create and share multimedia content and provide prompts to scaffold learning and reflection through custom or PebblePad templates. 
The templates can range from one page to multi-page workbooks with specific focuses such as recording a skill, recording a meeting experience, and working through structured reflection. Depending on the purpose of the activity, students' responses could be submitted for formative feedback or grades. Now that you've heard a bit about PebblePad, you might be curious what the platform looks like. This screenshot shows what the platform looks like when creating a workbook. As indicated by the red boxes, you can easily add and remove pages, add content such as a banner, text area, radio button question, date picker, rubric, and multimedia content, and edit the properties within each content block, template page, and workbook as a whole. Once you have finished creating the workbook, you can preview it as a student and share the workbook with a colleague for collaboration, testing, or general feedback. As you can see, there are multiple ways to tailor the workbook to best suit the needs of the user and pedagogical goals. So one of the best ways to become familiar with the platform is to dive in and explore. The integration of PebblePad and D2L was straightforward as Learn and PebblePad are synced through LTI links. As shown through the screenshot on the left side, we created a module titled PebblePad Portfolio, where students could easily access direct links to the Nature Journaling PebblePad workbook, Atlas, the assessment side of PebblePad, the PebblePad dashboard, as well as detailed instructions on how to provide peer feedback, as shown through the screenshot on the right side. We felt that this way of organizing the content was crucial in helping students feel as comfortable as possible with navigating the platform. In addition to the how-to guide and drop-in session, Kelsey created a short video, just under three minutes, to walk students through each step of accessing and providing feedback to their seminar group members' submissions. As mentioned earlier, we wanted the experience of using PebblePad to be as smooth as possible, and the video provided represented just one other access point for students. Journaling is the practice of drawing or writing in response to nature which can be done either in response to guided prompts from a facilitator or spontaneously by more experienced nature journalers. As nature journaling focuses on recording observations, thoughts, and feelings about what a person sees and experiences in nature at a specific place, it does not emphasize artistic aesthetic. Rather, it focuses on cultivating a growth mindset by purposefully documenting and communicating nature using the dual triad of nature journaling namely pictures, words, and numbers, and the prompts I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. In week one of the course, students were provided with examples of how to build their own nature journaling kit using supplies they had at home or could purchase from the dollar store. Students with personal interests in art forms like painting were encouraged to use existing supplies. In week two, students were guided through the process of choosing their place, which needed to be a local, naturalized urban setting or nearby nature, such as a conservation area. It also needed to be somewhere they could access independently and regularly and should require no more than 15 minutes travel from home or school. Weeks 3 through 11, students were provided with a series of seminar instructions, including a short five minute audio cast and transcript to describe the nature journaling activity, a downloadable set of instructions, a weekly PebblePad workbook instruction page and reflection page, the instruction page included meaningful examples of the outputs expected from each activity, such as those depicted on the slide, as well as samples of feedback for each submission. The reflection page provided places to log their experiences, upload evidence of completion photographs, and reflect on their nature immersion and experience of place slash activity. 12 students needed to create their summative creative component that would weave together their overarching experiences of place and nature journaling. Again, samples were provided along with an audio cast and transcript, as well as a how-to guide for assembling their ECR assignment, including their PebblePad workbook, creative component, and essay. Two examples of summative creative components are depicted on this slide. To enable the peer feedback portion of the nature journaling activity, students were placed in seminar groups that remained the same throughout the term. The range of four to five students per group worked well to foster trust and community among group members and aligned well with the number of TAs in the course. Students introduced themselves to their seminar group at the start of term and were asked to provide timely feedback to support their peers' development. Kelsey also provided her own comments within the seminar groups and shared general observations and course announcements. This screenshot is an example of a student submission for the week three activity titled, I Notice, I Wonder, It Reminds Me Of. The left side of the screenshot shows the text area prompts, which ask students to include their name, the date that they visited their place, and their thoughts on the most helpful peer feedback they received in the week prior. 
On the right side, the student can quickly see the peer feedback that has been given on their submission. Student engagement in the peer review feedback process was assessed weekly by the TA assigned to each group, and suggestions for how to provide more meaningful and actionable peer feedback were provided. To incorporate flexibility in the peer review, students' two lowest peer review scores were dropped. This decision was made largely to accommodate any unexpected events that might disrupt a student's schedule. Formative assessments of their ECR assignments occurred after week 12. To enable summative feedback on the overarching experiential creative and reflective assignment, students uploaded a link to their personal PebblePad workbook as well as their reflective essay in PDF or .doc format to learn. The overarching grades received were weighted between the experiential creative and reflective components, with the weekly PebblePad portfolio reflection counting for 40% of the overarching grade, the creative component counting for 10%, and the reflective essay counting for 50%. Detailed rubrics for how each element was assessed were provided to students at the beginning of term and were available on Learn throughout the semester to ensure students cultivated the skills necessary to succeed on each component of the assignment throughout the semester. This partnership provided an exciting opportunity to integrate my passion for experiential outdoor and place-based education, as well as nature journaling, with pedagogically sound online delivery. I'd like to explore some of the lessons learned through this process. As an instructor, I knew what I wanted the students' experience to be like, how important peer engagement would be, and what interdisciplinary learning and skills I wanted them to be able to take away from the experience and transfer to other learning environments. Working with Natalie and Catherine allowed me to learn the nuances of PebblePad at a much faster rate, while their support throughout the semester minimized students' frustrations with glitches in the software's integration into Learn, as well as ensuring that they had an easier time accessing dedicated PebblePad support. The front-loaded course design effort was considerable and spanned four months of design work, including attending a workshop on teaching nature journaling for university students, offered through the annual Nature Journaling Educators Conference, designing each of the seminars and producing the necessary instructional artifacts, like the work samples and video walkthroughs and audio casts, with the support from the OLAs. Natalie and Catherine's assistance in building the PebblePad platform and integrating it into Learn was essential from a seamless student and TA experience perspective, as was their support in providing a TA-centric workshop on using Atlas to grade peer review feedback. Based on preliminary feedback, student engagement throughout the semester was quite high. Many students reflected weekly on the benefits of non-screen time related learning experiences, the more meaningful interactions had through providing, reading, and integrating peer review feedback in comparison to what many described as an over-reliance on weekly discussion board posts in other classes, and the mental health benefits of being outside. As evidenced by the rich artifacts that students produced, many found the experience quite meaningful, both in terms of mental health benefits that they attributed to being outside and to peer connections fostered through the peer review process that helped to combat a sense of isolation associated with the pandemic learning experience, as well as in terms of feeling more connected to place. The opportunity to work with Kelsey in this capacity was exciting for me as I was still fairly new in my role as a liaison. I had much to learn in terms of relationship building with faculty, as well as developing expertise in PebblePad itself. With Catherine's leadership and support, I was able to gain a strong understanding of PebblePad in a short amount of time and was able to see the pedagogical value of using this tool in Kelsey's course. As you may realize, PebblePad can be used in various ways, and so we did come across some key learnings and technical discoveries along the way. Some students who were added late to the course experienced technical difficulties and as such were at a slight disadvantage as they needed to work hard to catch up. We also discovered that some students would access the PebblePad platform through a general Google search rather than clicking on the LTI links in Learn. This posed a slight problem as clicking on the LTI links was a key step in activating the sync between Learn and Atlas. To avoid these hiccups in the future, we will remember to offer more tailored support to late enrollments in the next offering to ensure students still have a good chance to succeed. Overall, PebblePad offered many features that we were able to utilize to create an engaging workbook. It was encouraging to see student engagement with the activities and with their peers throughout the term and celebrate the creativity that students applied in preparing their weekly submissions. As we began to think about the research analysis part of the project, we noticed that PebblePad does not currently offer a reporting feature that would help make the qualitative analysis process more efficient.
That said, we are working on a request to share with PebblePad, and we appreciate their willingness to help us find a workaround. By now, you're probably wondering what's next. Well, in spring 2022, the course will be offered again with two separate sections. One will be in person, which will have live lectures and online seminars. And the second section will be an online section with recorded lectures and online seminars. This will allow us to explore the impact of the online seminars in both an in-person and online environment through research that is funded through Learning Innovation and Teaching Enhancement, or Light Seed grant received from the Center of Teaching Excellence here at the University of Waterloo. Our research will use a pre-test and post-test survey administered in weeks 2 and 12 of the course to determine changes in environmental attitudes, values, and place attachment as a result of seminar engagement. Next, thematic analysis of PebblePad portfolios will be used to shed light on the depth and breadth of place-based outdoor experiential learning that is achieved by students and to provide insights into how online learning and remote course delivery impacts students' achievement of experiential place-based and outdoor learning outcomes. Thank you for attending our presentation. We would like to acknowledge the support from the Faculty of Health here at the University of Waterloo as well as the Research Office's Research Ethics Review Process and the Center for Teaching Excellence, particularly the Light Seed Grant, which we have received to conduct this research.